Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar, Keeping Operations Up and Running with Robotic Process Automation. Before we get started, I just want to remind everyone that all attendees have been muted and if you have any questions, please be sure to use the Q&A feature in the Zoom app. When we've concluded the presentations, we'll address all the questions that have been submitted and if we run out of time, we'll just provide answers in writing and share them via email with the group. I'm going to now hand things over to Ross Bentley, our Senior Director of Test Ops Practice for PK, and he'll get things started. Thanks, Linda, and thank all of you for joining us today as we talk about a topic that seems to resonate very strongly with all of us. Um, <clears throat> each one of us has been affected by this current pandemic and the, and the changes and challenges and restrictions that have come with it. So we're excited to present this webinar today on the topic of keeping operations up and running with RPA. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about who we are as PK. We're going to address some of the business continuity challenges that we're facing. And then we're going to get into some of the solutions that RPA can provide in answers to these challenges. Um, a little bit about us as PK. We are an experienced engineering firm headquartered in Beaverton, Oregon. We have about 3,500 employees located in global delivery centers all over the world, including India, Argentina, Mexico, and throughout the United States. We've been in business for 20 years, partnering with industry leaders in telecom, finance, healthcare, transportation, tech and retail to deliver solutions around strategy, design, loyalty, development, operations, analytics and big data, edge tech and automation. Today's presenters include Rajesh Patil, the director of RPA for PK with experience in designing and delivering customized RPA solutions for our clients. Additionally, Tom Mitchell, Executive Vice President of Enterprise Solutions for PK, and he currently heads our internal PK COVID-19 Task Force. And he's gonna to talk to us a little bit later about how um, corporations are addressing uh, this current challenge that we're facing. And my name is Ross Bentley. I'm Senior Director of Automation for PK. Thank you again for joining us. This pandemic finds us all in uncharted territory, both personally and in our workplaces. On the personal front, we're facing many challenges, including the uncertainty about the future, uh, product shortages as we try to keep our supplies stocked up, physical and mental health concerns, um, the challenges of, of sheltering at home, of working and school and <clears throat> entertainment and keeping our families um, going through this time, all um, creating significant challenges, as well as the whole thing of social distancing. These are putting a lot of stress on our homes and families and workers today. But additionally, there are corporate challenges as well, um, including economic uncertainty and the need for greater cost control, um, staff shortages and low employee morale, um, continuing to try to meet customer expectations of delivery with limited resources. Um, we're having to scale technologies um, to handle the demand and implement new technologies as well to, to be able to support this um, change in our working environments. Um, we have to manage a distributed global workforce, which requires more of, of the employees and of the leaders. And then all of this while trying to maintain um, accuracy and um, quality while increasing speed uh, of our deliveries. These put tremendous amount of stress on a company. The companies are responding and um, some of the ways that they are doing that is through the use of, of tools to help support some of these challenges and resolve them. Uh, one of those, and we're using it right now, is video conferencing. Uh, we are um, spending a lot of time on, uh, on video conferencing tools to, to continue to work together as teams. Uh, the virtual workforce enablement of, of allowing our team members to be able to work from home all over the world where maybe they haven't done that before. The use of instant messaging and chat tools to be able to communicate throughout the day or night to keep operations up and running. And finally, automation and RPA. Now, if you're not familiar, RPA is robotic process automation and it's a way to ensure business continuity and consistency through the means of automating key business processes. Using many great tools that are available on the market today, you can automate these processes to handle repetitive tasks across multiple systems. These bots, as they're called, allow you to perform tasks faster, more consistently, and without error, and allow your human workforce to focus on more critical tasks. I'm gonna introduce Rajesh Patil now, who's gonna tell us more about how RPA can be used in the workplace 
to help maintain business continuity. Rajesh. Thanks, Ross. I appreciate it. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, as Ross, you have rightly mentioned the current challenges faced by organizations due to COVID-19. RPA technology would help many organizations to overcome these challenges in a very efficient and non-invasive ways. As we all understand that COVID-19 has posed many challenges and disrupted our normal routine life, still the world keeps operating in a different way, although most of us are operating in silos. Yes, we are still getting our power, water, internet, telephone services, online ordering has increased and providing all necessary supplies like food and medicines. But let's look at this pandemic at a larger level. Since the COVID-19 outbreak was first diagnosed, it has spread to over 190 countries. The pandemic is having a noticeable impact on the global economic growth. It estimates that probably if it continues, every month there will be a 2% month you know, growth economic growth going down as it continues for a couple more months. And it's also affected global trade where it could fall from like 13% to 35%, depending on the depth and extent of the global economic downturn. And the impact, the full impact is still not known until the end of this pandemic. And every individual organization and nation are fighting this health and financial crisis together. So the pandemic has severely impacted the microeconomics and macroeconomics of the globe and still continuing to impact until the end of this pandemic, which is not known yet. So now as we are working, as you mentioned that we are working in silos, um, due to desperate systems, fragmented applications, information silos and social distancing, business operations have been impacted and would continue to impact until the end of this pandemic and until we return back to our normal operations. So this is the time to think of disruptive technologies to resolve current technologies due to COVID-19 and beyond to address all the issues impacting business operations. Hence, I would say it is the now or never moment for most of us so let us consider this pandemic as a game changer opportunity instead of a problem to think and implement new technologies. So RP is already coined as one of the disruptive technologies to resolve you know, many automation issues. And right now this will help in reducing the gap of information silos, social distancing, fragmented application, desperate systems, all together moving into one single digital transformation platform that provides multi-dimensional benefits to increase process automation and reduce human effort and operational expenses with increased speed, accuracy, and ROI. So when we, uh, we can see that, you know, the digital workforce can help you to provide your services like 24 by seven, meet customer expectations, and increase, you know, accuracy and speed and ROI and increase the economic stability as well. So uh, there is also a misconception or a myth about RPA that uh, digital workforce replace human workforce, which is not true. RPA or a digital workforce augment human workforce by performing the mundane activities and free up resources for a higher value cognitive and collaborative tax. All right, thanks Rajesh. Now we're gonna talk more about how RPA can be applied to specific solutions in different industries um, during this pandemic to relieve some of the challenges that organizations are facing. Um, let's start specifically with healthcare and in that, um, hospitals. Yes, Ross, uh, before even uh, talk about like the issues or the challenges faced by hospitals and, and the RPA solutions, we would like to thank all the frontline workers who are working diligently, risking their own lives to fight this current pandemic. So thanks to them. Here are a like couple of uh, hospital operations challenges we would like to speak about. One is about like sudden increase in staff or volunteer onboarding. The second one is reconciliation of increasing inventory. And the third one is managing and tracking of employee health. So hospitals are choked as the current capacity of healthcare professionals and volunteers are overwhelmed with working day and night in certain states, especially like we see like New York and New Jersey, Michigan, Massachusetts. And uh, the pre-screening of these volunteers is a critical aspect because when these state um, volunteers are asking to outreach the other state volunteers, when everyone wants to like join the hospitals to help. But right now, the process is that you have to who are pre-screening of all these like um, volunteers, they need to check their criminal background, they need to check their HIPAA licenses and everything 
which is a manual task and a very tedious and time consuming considering the urgency and pandemic. So RPA can be a game changer in this process by automating the pre-screening and background check process that would accelerate pre-screening process and onboarding process. On the other side, hospitals need PP and ventilators that are critical in this pandemic. And due to the surge of PP equipments and supplies, hospitals are trying to find the right vendors and their bids as well for the procurement of equipments. So RPA could deploy bid, you know, bots to look into the bidding and procurement process, validate vendors for their prices, their qualities, and you know, and the location so that they can address all these critical challenges in time. Also, once the vendor is selected, the reconciliation of products could be tracked, including the different states of products from shipping to like in transit or arrival, whether it has been still in, in the place, to, that will provide the real-time data that will be helpful to manage the locations, the disbursement of resources, and the operations in a very efficient way. And now also, like we know that the hospitals need to manage the track and employee health regularly because you cannot have an employee or like a healthcare worker coming in with, who's like a COVID you know, patient and treating the folks. So you have to make sure that providing the real-time data so that you can take a decision to either them to have them continue the work or quarantine so that they can avoid spreading of the COVID-19. So you could create, you know, these bots to help manage the staff volunteer onboarding, which basically reduces human onboarding effort and free up resources to concentrate on critical tasks. At the same time, you can create bots to manage reconciliation of products and services and to track the employee health, again, to enable free up resources to for the critical tasks. Now let's let's dig more into like you know what is actually happening on the real time process of volunteer onboarding. So when you look at the whole process, you can see that when you want apply for the application for in the healthcare industry, you have to go through this whole cycle of like ten tasks and like application for job, preliminary interview, then selection test, employment interview, selection decision, and then at step five, that's where actually the reference and background check happens, which is a very time consuming process here. Then you have physical examination, job offer, contract of employment, then assigned us. So you can see that you know, more than a couple of thousands of volunteers signed up you know, and are still signing out. And we have a shortage of resources for the manual screening of applications, which is basically posing the risk. So once we move this uh, to RPA, how RPA could help here is bots could help with the heavy HL lift. Uh, also like can run through the screening of the background check processes, which will help them to reduce the average time to process volunteers onboarding to a great extent, and also reduce the manual data input and increase the impuracy and accuracy of the reporting info. Thank you, Rajesh, appreciate that. Um, we're seeing another place where RPA um, can help um, is an area that's being significantly impacted right now um, and that is in the financial industry. Talk to us about how RPA can solve some of those challenges as well. Absolutely, Ross. So financial institutes currently are receiving extremely high volume of calls from customers for their personal or business challenges and impact related to COVID-19. But with limited resources, financial institutes are struggling to address all those customer concerns and provide all the information on the phone. So I'd like to emphasize on like two things here. One is about like managing increased number of hardship financing or like uh, mortgage forbearing applications with limited resources. And the second one is to speed up the claims for small business debt relief applications. So uh, let, like we are aware of the situation, current situation of the pandemic of the layoffs, uh, uncertainty of economic situation. Many homeowners started to file mortgage forbearance applications and financial institutes face a sudden surge of these applications. And as the pandemic still continues, many homeowners would file for these applications in the next few months, or maybe, you know, we don't know the time yet. And this is going to be a continuous situation for financial institutes to manage these applications and provide the resource and provide the, you know, responses to all these uh, customers. On the other side, many smaller business owners faced losses due to pandemic and started applying for the debt relief on SPA and many more would file in the next few months as well. So you could see that the surge of these claims applications 
are hitting very hard on financial institutes. And it is difficult to process all these applications ASAP. So financial institutes need a way to speed up application processing as soon as possible. The list not only like stops here, you know, like there are like uh, many are filing for the EDL, which is your economic injury disaster loan, emergency advance, or PPP, which is your paycheck protection program, and the list still continues. And as the data shows that there are almost like 23 million people have filed for unemployment as of uh, last like yesterday, which is an alarming number for financial crisis following the healthcare crisis. So let's see how RPA could help in this situation. So we could implement bots to manage the hardship financing or the mortgage forbearance applications. So the process works like this when anyone applies for it, the borrowers and the financial institutes will make a decision based on certain rules, based on their income, whether they can give it for like a six months or like three months, is it only interest only, or maybe you know, the principal only. So all these rules will be fed into the bot and bot could do it you know, 24 by seven so that it could process these uh, applications much faster. At the same time, bots could manage the small business debt relief applications as well. So they can run it and look into address the initial first notice of last task, including letter generation, whether you know for a six months or eight months, you don't have to pay for your loans and all. So this is how RPA could be implemented, which will reduce the human effort and increase the claim response time to a great extent. That's great. Thanks, Rajesh. And now we're going to continue to talk about different applications where RPA can be used. Um, and this time we'll look into how it um, can solve some of the challenges in the logistics industry. Sure, Ross, certainly. Um, we would like to discuss about one classic use case right now, which is pretty much you know, belongs to the airline industry. So the challenge is a tremendous increase in voucher refund and services. The travel restrictions and due to pandemic, airlines had to and to continue cancel many flights and issue vouchers and refund to ticket holders. And also airlines uh, call centers have been flooded with inquiries for refunds. So the manual process works like this. So the customer call for refund or voucher, the call center rep investigate the customer travel booking, then customer submit the required documents or the travel ticket in a booking information. Then call center rep validates the refund or voucher depending on the travel policy. So it works like this, you know, whether you are like a silver member, gold member or platinum number, depending on the certain rules, uh, the airlines will provide them either the voucher or maybe the refund. So once that validation happens, then call center they provide that refund or voucher to the customer. So this is the actual manual process right now. So let's see how we can improvise this with the RPA and digital workforce. So bots can be deployed to handle high volumes of voucher refund requests and cancellations. And bots can also help in call center reps to understand the volumes and communicate better with the customers. So when here, like when customer call for a refund or voucher, we could implement a chat bot, which would actually complete the preliminary Q and A. So if you know you are getting like 150 calls and you have only 10 reps managing it, so the chat bot would ask, "Do you want to call back later?" So if someone says yes, that way you can filter and reduce the number of calls to the call center rep. But in case yes, then the chat would ask the preliminary questions and transfer it to rep. The call center rep investigate the customer travel booking based on the information, and then provide the details to the bot. And now you can see that bot will validate the travel details with the travel policy and provide refund or voucher details to the rep again back. And call center rep will provide the refund or voucher to the customer. So here you can see that in step three, bot, you know, in step one and step three, we can see that the chat bot and the regular bot has been implemented to so that you can save significant efforts or back office work, provide excellent customer experience and reduce your backlog for the back office. That's great. Thanks, Rajesh. And we're going to take one last look at an industry vertical, and that is in the government and public sector. Rajesh, how can RPA help out processes in these areas? Sure, Ross. Um, this is, um, you can say that this is applicable to government, public, or private specs in a, uh, spectrum. Basically, 
what happened in the last few months is due to mandated lockdown, it's created a spike in federal and state leave requests to a great extent. So many employees had to take care of their family. They have to take care of them. You know, if there is a patient, like COVID patient, they have to take care of them. So there, could, there was a sudden surge in the claims that needs to be addressed as ASAP because you have to make sure you have to either grant the FMLA or you need to ask them to go back. So the process works like this. The employee apply for FMLA and the HR or FMLA rep investigate the employee eligibility for FMLA. And again, the HR or FMLA rep will update the employee whether they're eligible or not based on the number of hours they work with the organization. Then they can ask for the, you know, the employee that whether they need any medical certification or the documentation and also need to validate the qualifying reason for FMLA. So once employees submit the medical certificates and the required documents, the uh, HR rep will update the employee whether the FMLA has been granted or not. If not, then ask them, send a notice so that you know, they can go back to work. So this is the regular process. So let's see how RPA could help here. So bots can pick up a claim from a common queue and check eligibility and also like assist with the claim creation, validation and approval uh, for the written notices and later generation. So when employee apply for FMLA, bot investigate the employee eligibility for FMLA, that bot will update the employee whether they're uh, applicable for FMLA or not. Then the second step is bot to determine whether do they need any medical certification or not. So once it updates the employee, the requirement of the medical certification and the qualifying reason, employee submit the medical certificate documents and here bot would validate it then let the employee know whether the FMLA is granted or not. If not, then they need to send a written notice work for them. So you can see that the benefits are, it reduces a great extent of back office overhead. It also processes claims quickly, reduces your backlog and help reinstate employees to go back to work. Thanks. There's so many great applications across so many different industries. I think, um, finds us all kind of wishing that these were already implemented to, to um, reduce the throughput in a lot of these areas that we're experiencing personally. Um, and now I'd like to take a moment and talk about how um, ProKarma has responded, our corporate response to the COVID-19 pandemic. And, and with that, I wanna to introduce Tom Mitchell, EVP of ProKarma of Enterprise Solutions and the, the head of our internal um, COVID-19 task force. Tom, tell us what kind of things ProKarma has done to um, address the challenge. Raj, Rajesh, thank you for having me on today. Hello, everyone. Um, do you want to move it to the next slide? Yeah. Perfect. All right. So, you know, we, we really started to um, think of COVID-19 as something we needed to look at as a company in late February. So we have a business continuity plan. And, you know, it, it addresses, you know, all the common disasters that we might have, whether it's um, you know, natural disasters, you know, a military conflict or, or some form of conflict um, in any of, of the areas that we operate around the world. These are really the standard things that you plan for. A pandemic was not something that we had prepared for. So we started kind of on reactive footing and formed the uh, pandemic response team uh, as a subset of our business continuity planning group. Um, I'm on a couple of those committees. We pulled in legal, HR, IT, PK communications, and some of our marketing team members. And we gave um, this particular team a charter uh, from our executives that allowed us to set policy immediately um, and support our global response through each of the subsidiaries, whether that was Argentina, India, or Mexico, um, to ensure that, that we were employee safety first but that you know, all aspects of our planning also looked at how we would be able to ensure the continuity of service that we make as a commitment to our customers. So what happened after we formed the committee is we, we took a look at two things, right? What do we need to do from a health and safety perspective? Recognizing that shelter in, space, uh, shelter in place was likely going to happen, but maybe not consistently in all areas that we operate. So, you know, we took a conservative approach and continue to take a conservative approach with respect to our view and response to COVID-19. And what that means in our particular case is we assumed all, all uh, localities would have shelter in place. 
that we would need to support uh, remote working on an extended period of time for all of our employees, whether those employees are our back office supporting our company and its operations or front office working with our clients directly on a variety of uh, delivering consulting engagements. What that meant then is that we developed a set of uh, training programs, um, enhancing kind of our guidelines for work from home um, and leading a variety of uh, training seminars. We created a dedicated uh, employee communication site that had um, everything from, you know, what to do about schooling at home to what's going on in a particular geographic region. And of course, being a global organization, we have to be cognizant of the fact that while English is the the business language in exceptional circumstances, we need to be able to address our employee base in, in the best native language um, that they have. And so in, in the case of Argentina, we made sure that we had enough time and translated all the key materials into Spanish um, to ensure that, again, consistency of message, um, tonality, all those things that are really important to take care of our employee base, right, to enable us to serve our clients was gonna be maintained. Um, we had a variety of communications with our clients, um, you know, everything from what was going on from a business continuity perspective uh, to what we call the pandemic policy, right? So those things that um, oriented how our particular response team was working and what our company's um, uh, activities looked like. We, we performed a number of tests to make sure work from home uh, was going to be functional, engaging clients in transportation, telecommunications, media, informing them that subsets of our employees that work out of our delivery centers globally would be testing from home, uh, confirming that that was going to be okay, that we're going to set off um, access triggers or intrusion monitoring because we're outside of a normal range of IPs. Um, the great thing is every customer that, uh, that we have at ProKarma was super receptive to our um, kind of proactive lean-in on those tests, but they were also, um, you know, very um, engaged in making sure that we had an opportunity to test it and tested it for enough time. So, you know, in some cases we're like, no, we'll just do a single day, work from home. Clients came back and said, hey, could you please do three to five days, right? We wanna make sure that everything from the way we connect to, you know, mapping out the different IPs in a particular city like Buenos Aires um, and the extended neighborhoods and towns around it was gonna work well for them. Right. Um, having that sort of engagement with our customers, you know, took us to a next level of product pro, um, proactive um, activities around communications inside our organization, whether that was, um, you know, partnering with IT around various policy for, you know, working from home, working with their counterparts globally to ensure that we were prepared to take workstations into people's houses um, in a way that was going to be fast. Right. India went to a national lockdown. Um, and we needed to be able to respond to that in just four hours and get the distribution of goods uh, to thousand, you know, to over a thousand employees in three cities, um, where the majority of those employees, you know, 50%, 60%, including our back office staff, um, typically work off workstations and not laptops. And those laptops don't typically leave our center unless they're senior leaders. So you know, there were a variety of things that we needed to be ready to do, plan, exercise, and execute. Um, as we come kind of to the next phase of planning at ProKarma, we're trying to think ahead from a, from a strategic perspective, 90 to 120 days, and from a tactical perspective, just 30 days. So for us, what that means is we're looking at office reintegration. Um, much like your own businesses, we have a central staff that have been working in our offices. As a result of that, we chose not to close them. Right. What we did was we moved, you know, close to 95% of our staff into a working from home mode. We, for essential staff, had rotational periods. So you can imagine a facility with, you know, 10,000, 20,000 square feet with maybe three people that are there in a day. Um, and, you know, that, that was good for their health. It was good for the operation of our business. And we are super appreciative of the work they did. But now is the point where a number of um, jurisdictions around the country are looking at the opportunity to quote unquote reopen and have people go back to work. So for us, that means, you know, determining percentage of staff that are going to return, taking a look at, at the cycle of cases in those particular areas, right? So we may choose to dial up and dial back. Um, all about, you know, our ability to keep our uh, employees healthy and safe. Um, while, you know, recognizing the fact that in the last month, we've really been able to successfully um, execute from a remote perspective um, the duties that we typically have with our customers. So 
in thinking about office reintegration, we want our employees to make great decisions. Um, our team on the RPA side developed a, a COVID-19 knowledge base with a chat bot over it. And the purpose of that is to do a couple of things. One, answer questions our employees have, and Rajesh is gonna demo it here in just a minute. Um, the other is to empower them to make good decisions, right? So for example, I have allergies and um, at a certain point in, um, in the season, they can be bad enough that it looks like I have a severe cold, right? So I go to the chat bot and say, hey, you know, I, I'm, I'm sick and it'll ask me some questions, you know, do you think you have this, have you been exposed? The answer is a no to that. The result of that questioning will be, hey, just call your manager and have a conversation, right? Um, and the purpose from a programmer perspective, from a PK perspective, is really about um, ensuring that we do not um, expose our, our employees to a situation where they feel uncomfortable and we manage their success in the workplace. So thank you for the time. Rajesh, if you could demo the chat bot, I think everybody would like to see what we're doing to help our employees go back to the office. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, so, this is our COVID nineteen Q and A chat bot. Um, I'll you know run through and show you. So, um, this chat bot was trained to answer questions related to COVID nineteen virus, how it spreads to community, ways to protect us, you know, and questions related to peak and work environment at this pandemic. Also answered by this chat. It almost has around like uh, close to like two hundred, you know, or more than that. So let's see, like, you know, it starts here. It says like, hi, hello, and asking you, I'm PK COVID virtual agent, can I help you with the COVID question? So the questions, you know, when, when we are in stress, when especially considering like the pandemic situation, we are doing a lot of mistakes here in the typing. So, but still we can say that it will pick up and it will provide you the information. It says, hey, you know, this is the process for locations for testing. The question I have symptoms of COVID, where can I get tested for virus? It's gonna say, hey, this is the testing for COVID-19, which is basically takes you to the link for like CDC Central, where you can go and understand how to test it, where to test it, what is the processes, everything around. So that's your answer. Now it says, did I answer the question right? Yeah, yes, it, it did. Now, they also ask for like, you know, what is your um, uh, rate my experience? So far, so good, excellent. And now the second question comes here is, now you ask for the symptoms. Now the next question is about the health insurance. So most of the time what happens is we, we are not prepared for this pandemic. So maybe you have any insurances or not, how you do you cover your dependents or not? So now the question is asking, I did not cover my dependents previously in my insurance, but can I do it now? So let's see what our chatbot will answer for this. Uh, yeah, so we can enroll in the in the in the web uh, benefits now. So they say yes, you can do it. And based on the new policies, what uh, Tom has already mentioned to you, that we should be able to do it. And you can go to the benefits or HR people, PK Global Assistance, and how all these things answered. Did it answer your question right? Yes, excellent. Yes, thanks for your feedback. You know, Rajesh, one of the things that I really like about the chatbot is the natural language processing, right? You don't have to have yep. perfect sentence structure like we used to with these things. You know, you can have misspellings and yet it brings you to a great answer. And, and part of that is that machine learning model, but mm -hmm. um, it certainly makes it a lot easier to use. Okay. Thanks, Tom. So I did answer your earlier questions, although you misspelled a couple of times. With the NLP, it was able to pick and provide the right information based on that. Anything else? No, thanks. Great. That's great, Rajesh. But a, it's a perfect example of how RPA can be used to, to solve real business challenges. And, and I know for me, it gets me thinking about other opportunities, other places where we can implement such things. Um, and that leads us to our time of Q&A as uh, Lena had started out to say questions were being submitted through the Q&A function within the webinar. And so we're going to take some time now to address as many of those as we can. Um, first question we have, uh, says we're brand new to RPA. Where should we start? Rajesh, how would you answer that? 
Yeah, so normally the way it works is like you need to have your strategy. So we define your strategy, build and run I mean, as per our, our policy. And we need to do the process assessment just to understand like, you know, where you stand and what kind of process are required, what verticals are you in. Then there are certain particular processes in certain verticals, which are a classic use case for RP examples. So that's where we start and then we design and then build and run it and then operationalize those bots to achieve higher ROI. Great. Um, next question, and I'll take this one. It says, do you think bots will replace human workers? And we've talked about this a little bit, but yeah, I just want to come back to this. Bots are best equipped to handle the mundane, repetitive tasks in a repeatable, consistent fashion, um, typically things that, that humans aren't great at. Um, and this allows our human workforce to take on the more cognitive, creative, productive, value-added tasks to be able to um, focus those resources on where, where really needed. Um, and so this allows the bots to handle the, the, the repeated tasks and, the, and the, our human folks can work on things that are much more important and valuable to the business. Um, here's one, Rajesh. Uh, we tried RPA several years ago and the tools um, struggled with the processes we were trying to automate. Has the technology improved at all? Oh yeah, absolutely. So uh, many tools you know, have been implementing all new features to address like new technologies to support the new technologies like especially like OCR for image, image recognition then handling different applications you know that Google Tesseract all these like uh, things like you know helping to improvise the tools whether to identify the right uh, learning pretty much like a machine le machine learning stuff and also like working with the Citrix and different objects and tools as well that makes like the bots like more resilient now. They can handle a lot of different applications and errors and maintenance. Great, uh, next question. Um, what happens when you've recorded a process and you're, and you're running it and now the process has changed? So the way it works is, uh, that's why we always advocate that you need to choose the right process before you automate it. So you pick the process which doesn't change a lot, but in case if it is changing, you create like one is like what is called as a as is process, then look how to improvise the process, which is a to be process. Then you create an automation on that. Great. Um, here's an I'll take. It says, is RPA expensive to implement? And the answer to that is, yeah, there, initially there are some, some upfront costs and licensing. Uh, there's costs to, to develop uh, the bots and the, and the platform they run on. There will be some ongoing costs to maintain and um, operate those bots. Uh, but overall, that investment that's initially made and, and the, the ongoing investment is made up for um, significantly and very soon in the process as these bots um, begin to process the tasks and reduce the cost of uh, some of these business processes. Um, so it pays for itself very quickly. Um, just, someone's asking you about um, how bots might work in a manufacturing um, industry. Can you share some insights you have on that? Absolutely, Ross. Um... As RPA is completely vertical agnostic, it is applicable to finance, manufacturing, supply chain, you know, healthcare and everything. Specifically in manufacturing, it works very well because you are dealing with a lot of inventory and you need to track the inventory uh, to uh, you know, make sure that the operations work seamlessly and bots could help very well in identifying the ship, the invoicing, the shipment, to the uh, distribution, and coming to the plant and again, going back to the, you know, your sellers or, or like distribution list. So you can track all these things with the bots real time, which will reduce your lot of manual work because everyone is doing a lot of manual work in this and this can be, you know, moved to RPA with the digital workforce so that we can free up the manual work to do, you know, regular more collaborative and uh, quantitative work. Right, and uh, last question, I'll take this one. So we weren't able to achieve the ROI we first expected. How should we try to resolve this? That's a really good question. And normally we find our, um, our clients who have ventured off into an RPA strategy um, sometimes struggle with keeping it up and running, actually realizing the, the ROI that they first intended. And we can, uh, what we found is that if we come in and we help you address the, the, your architecture and strategy, how your bots are being developed, um, 
working on um, perhaps a COE to establish standards and governance for robot development and deployment, um, and also implementing um, best practices. Um, these things uh, we found have really helped our customers go from a, an environment where, where they're struggling to realize ROI on their RPA implementation to a place where they're really able to enjoy the benefits. We can come in and help you with a strategy, with an assessment, and with um, kind of bootstrapping your bots and getting them up and running. And we'd be glad to talk to you about that at a further time. And that's all the questions we have. Um, I'd like to, to conclude this time by letting you know that we have some upcoming webinars. Um, this is the first in our series of RPA webinars. Um, and we also have some additional webinars around test automation. Um, the next one will be a week from today, April 30th. Um, and that's focused on better bots for an automated future. This is on the operationalization of bots and how to create a more robust um, RPA environment. Um, we have one on test data, leveraging AI and machine learning to accelerate test automation. That one's gonna happen in early May. Um, and then later on, we've got some focused on bot health, bot health checks and um, automation in the digital mail room. The email that goes out after this webinar will include um, the dates and the links to these webinars as well so that you can um, sign up for that. The email will also include um, follow-up details for PK if you have any questions and a link to this uh, webinar so you can um, listen to it again if you'd like. Um, and with that, we just wanna say thank you for your time. We appreciate you coming and giving us a chance to talk to you about how we see RPA significantly contributing to where we are today with this current pandemic and how it can help us um, toward, a, toward a better future. Um, I wanna wish you the best and hope that you are able to stay safe and healthy. Thank you again for joining us. Have a great day. Thank you everyone. Thank you so much.